Yes, Father, when things get tough, when we feel like we are suffering, when it seems like it is impossible to move on, we trust in you. In the silence, we know that you are there. And you have shown to us that you're reliable and you're trustworthy in every moment of our lives. So we lift your name on high and we thank you. In your name, amen. All right, please be seated. Welcome everyone to OC. So going through some of the announcements today. So uh, next week is our daylight savings time. And so on uh, March 13th, we will be springing forward, which means that we will lose one hour of rest. So do be, <laughs> so do be ready and adjust your clocks. And again, uh, our worship starts at 9.30 with prayer meeting. Moving on, uh, we have uh, Sister Jennifer. She created a mural uh, out in Grace Hall. And so uh, it, it depicts the transfiguration, the crucifixion, and the resurrection of Christ, especially as we go into this Easter uh, season. And so uh, do check it out. And of course, always give glory to God, uh, especially now that we get to celebrate his death and resurrection. And lastly, for our 40th anniversary, um, we, we are having a planning co uh, committee, and so if you do have anything that you want to suggest or if you want to brainstorm, please talk to me as we prepare for uh, this anniversary. It is going to be on September 18th, right? Cool. So with that being said, uh, we have Pastor John Sim speaking for us today. Uh, previously this year, he was online, but we get to now have him uh, speak to us in person. And so his passage... Uh, is in Matthew 6, 25 to 33, titled, How Do I Overcome Worry? Let's welcome Pastor Johnson. Thank you. Good morning. morning. I wonder this morning when you woke up, did you say, good morning, Lord? Or did you say, good Lord, it's morning? <laughs> There's a big difference uh, between the two. Um, I'm so glad to be here, uh, live with you. I know in January, um, I was here, but uh, it was online. And I, uh, you know, like to thank Pastor Elfie for giving me this opportunity to bring uh, the message to you. In fact, the last time I preached here was um, about six years ago. So that's quite a, a long time uh, to be absent uh, from uh, the church that I love. Uh, as you know, I previously I was the uh, pastor of Grace Bible Church, uh, part of the um, uh, EFC, the English-speaking EFC. And um, it's so good to be able to just come and fellowship with you. Do you believe that God is going to speak today? Someone said, if you expect nothing, you shall surely get it. <laughs> but if you expect God to speak, I believe God will speak. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you that you are here with us. Thank you that your Holy Spirit is just um, filling us with your overwhelming presence. Come and Lord, just bring forth your word. Speak to us. For we long to listen, and when we listen, help us to obey and put into practice what we have learned. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Do you ever worry? There's a story of two men who were talking, and one man told the other, I have a mountain of credit card debt. I hear you, said the other man. You know, I lost my job. My car is being repossessed and our house is in foreclosure. But I'm not worried about it, exclaimed his friend. No, because I've hired a professional worrier. <laughs> he does all the worrying for me. And that way, I don't have to think about it. That's fantastic. Uh, how much does your professional worrier 
charge for his services. $50,000 a year, he replied. And a friend said, $50,000 a year? Where are you going to get that kind of money? I don't know, comes the reply. That's his worry. <laughs> <laughs> what is a worry? Well, worry is a feeling of uneasiness about an uncertain or threatening future or past event. What symptoms can be associated with worry? Well, there's anxiety, inability to relax, right? Uh, by the way, the, I think the fonts are too huge for the screen, and so that's why it's all um, muddled up. But uh, tension, headaches, sleeplessness, heart palpitations, feelings of tightness in the chest, belching, nausea, diarrhea, irritability, difficulty, concentrating. And so if you have any of these uh, symptoms, it's possible that you may have a problem with worry. There's a story about a man who was walking on a road toward a city and he saw death going the same way. And the man asked death, what are you going to do? And death replied, I'm going to this city to take 100 people with me. That's horrible, the man said. That's the way it is. Death said, that's what I do. And so the man hurried to warn everyone he could about Death's plan. As evening fell, he met Death again. And the man said, you told me you were going to take 100 people, but why did 1,000 die? I kept my word, Death responded. I only took 100 people. Worry took the rest. Now, this interesting tale portrays so well the fact that worry is universal. We all worry at one time or the other. And worry has been linked to all the leading causes of death, including heart disease, cancer, lung, ailments, accidents, cirrhosis, and suicide and an estimated 1 million workers are absent on an average workday because of stress-related complaints. By the way, worry is not the same as concern. Concern says that this is an issue and I'm going to deal with it and with God's help, I can get through it. Whereas worry says, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm afraid and I do not know if I can get through it. Why do we worry? Well, first of all, life is hard. Bad things do happen to good people. And some of you are experiencing, uh, experiencing hardships in life, especially when we are in this pandemic. Maybe you received notice that your job is being cut. By the way, my son was in the travel industry and, and you know, a lot of people like his job because he gets to travel around the world and, and so on. But you know, when the pandemic hits, his was one of the first jobs to be cut. And he had been out of work for one and a half years. And some of you are experiencing sickness in a family, maybe financial difficulty, and that's why life is hard. And it's not easy to, uh, to get rid of worry. Secondly, the future is uncertain. Another obvious statement. But we worry because we do not know what the future holds. We are not sure when this pandemic will end and when we'll return to normal or the new normal. The future is uncertain, especially with the conflict now between Russia and Ukraine. And it is affecting us directly. You know, if you uh, go to the gas pumps, you know that <laughs> you're going to pay so much more. Uh, by the way, driving in, I see uh, a lot of Teslas uh, in the parking lot. <laughs> so those people don't pay as much. <laughs> uh, but, you know, electricity is going up as well. Um, and so we 
can prepare as best as we know how, but we really do not know if that's going to be enough. And so the bottom line is that the future is unknowable. No one can predict the future. And then finally, we are not in control. What I mean by that is that the amount of control we have is not sufficient to absolutely protect us from harm. At best, we have only the illusion of control. If we were really in control, then no one would ever suffer. Now, we can improve our odds, but even experts cannot guarantee the outcome because they are affected as well. You know, doctors, they do get sick. <laughs> Financial experts lose money in the stock market. Policemen get robbed. Lawyers get sued. And good, loving, responsible parents are rejected by their teenage and adult children. And so we work and work to gain money and knowledge so that we can ward off danger. We eat right, we exercise, we move to a good neighborhood, we send our kids to uh, a good school. We can do everything we can, but it's still not enough. So that's why people worry, and they allow those worries to get the best of them. There is a poem that goes like this. All the water in the world, however hard it tried, could never, never sink a ship unless it got inside. And all the hardships of this world might wear you pretty thin, but they won't hurt you one least bit unless you let them in. Someone said worry is like concrete. <laughs> once it gets into your thought life, it hardens like granite. So how do I overcome worry? Well, as believers, it is important that you must have faith that God will provide. By the way, I always like to personalize uh, my message because instead of when you look at your notes, you must have faith. <laughs> when you look, look at your notes, it says, I must have faith. A reminder that this message is for you, um, a personal application. So I must have faith that God will provide all that I need, whether it be financial, emotional, relational, and so on. I want us to turn to a passage of Scripture in Matthew chapter 6. And this is part of the Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus uh, is speaking to a large uh, multitude of people on the mountainside. And so, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, it says this, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. And so Jesus makes a bold statement in saying, do not worry about your life. And in fact, the Greek word translated do not worry literally means to be drawn in different directions. And so worry pulls us apart and people are pulled apart because they try to live their lives by depending on material things rather than God. It also has the meaning of being distracted. That is anxiety about food and clothing uh, that will distract you from far more important things in life. And you begin to worry about life rather than enjoy it. And in the second part of uh, verse 25, it says, Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? This is the rhetorical question, right? Life and body are certainly more important than food and clothing. Who provides our lives and our bodies? God, isn't it? Now, if God is powerful enough to create life, isn't He also able to provide food and clothing to sustain that life? Now, we work so that we can have enough money to buy food and clothes. Now, that's where stress comes in. 
according to the American Psychological uh, Association, we are most stressed about work and money. <laughs> and then followed by workload, children, and responsibilities. Now, you may say or decide today, okay, I'm not going to worry. But unfortunately, many of us equate this with not taking action. For example, if you say, I'm not going to worry about what I will eat, right? What I will wear, my house, my job. Now, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't prepare dinner for yourself and for your family, or that you walk around the house naked, or that you don't take care of your house, or, or just decide that that's it, you know, I'm not going to work tomorrow. No. Do not worry means you stop fretting over your life. Stop letting all the things in life consume and take over your mind. And Jesus stressed that if God gave us life, we could trust Him for the things which we need to sustain life, isn't it? And so that's why in verse 26, Jesus said, Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? And so Jesus tells us to look at the birds to see Father God at work. The birds are an example of God's ability to provide. There is no worry in their lives. There is no attempt to pile up goods for an unforeseeable future. And yet, their lives go on through God's uh, providential workings in nature, God provides for their needs. Now, the point that Jesus is making is not that birds do not work for their needs. Indeed, they are often very busy uh, gathering food, uh, preparing nests, uh, caring for their young. The point is that they do not worry, but diligently work to maintain their lives, trusting in God to provide. Therefore, in the same manner, we need not to be anxious about our existence. We are certainly more valuable than, to God than birds, isn't it? If God provides for their needs, will He not for you as well? Why then do you let concern over physical needs distract you from what is really important in life? Why do you allow those worries to pull you apart? And then verse 27, Jesus said, Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? And so this argument illustrates the helplessness of human beings. There are many things in life which we cannot uh, affect by worrying. Worrying accomplishes nothing. If you worry, you still cannot control the outcome. So not only does worry not help, it often has the opposite effect. Worry about losing your hair? Well, worry will only accelerate the process. It won't add a single hair to your head. Worry about getting sick? Well, again, worry probably suppresses your immune system and makes it more likely that you will get sick. Worried about losing your job? Well, worry may actually cause behavior that lowers your performance and you might really lose your job. Worry about gaining weight? Well, you'll probably eat more. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25 says, An anxious heart weighs down a person. And so worry is like sitting in a rocking chair. Lots of energy expanded, but no forward progress. By the way, uh, are you using PowerPoint? Because if it's PowerPoint, the chair will actually rock. <laughs> but, but it won't because uh, some of the animation is gone. <laughs> so worry is like putting your car in neutral 
and revving the engine. It burns oil and gas and it's hot on the engine, but it doesn't get you anywhere. That's okay, we can leave it for that. <laughs> Oops, uh, now it doesn't work. <clears throat> Go to the next slide. So in verses 28 to 30, Jesus said this, And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that Solomon, even Solomon in all his splendor, was, was dressed like one of this. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Jesus gives another example of God's ability and willingness to provide, right? This time, of the lilies of the fields. Look at how they grow, Jesus said, without any toil, whatever, and without care. Yet their glory surpasses Solomon in all his glory. How? Well, through God's providential provision. And so, if God is able to so clothe the grass of the field, is He not able and willing to do so for you? So, God takes care of His children. We don't have to worry because God provides for us. God feeds the birds and clothes the lily of the, and the grass of the fields. He will feed and clothe us as well. And then Jesus said something interesting. O you of little faith. So what does that mean? If we worry, we are of little faith. Because we have little faith in God's promise to care for us and His power to deliver that promise. And so Jesus sums it up in verse 31. So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows you need them. Jesus puts... Jesus said this, Worry put us in the same category as those who do not know God. Because people without God naturally worry about these things, right? <clears throat> the people who don't know God live in a way that they rely on themselves. Therefore, when I start fretting and worrying about what am I going to eat, what am I going to wear, how am I going to make ends meet, then we are like people who rely upon themselves rather than God. Worry is and always will be a fatal disease of the heart, for its beginning sickness, the end of faith. So believers and non-believers get the same challenges, they go through the same trials, uh, the same illnesses, but because I believe as a believer that God wants to show the world that a believer lives and responds differently to the worries and challenges of this life. So the believer responds by resting and relying on God to provide no matter the circumstances. The non-believer responds by being worried. And then finally, how do I overcome worry? I must put God first in my life. No one would claim that having enough food to eat and clothing to wear are trivial matters. For the people to whom Jesus was speaking, these were life and death issues, but they aren't the most important things. The things we should be most concerned about are the things which matter most. And that's why in verse 33 of Matthew 6, Jesus said, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these 
things will be given to you as well. Our primary concern in this life should not be pleasing and serving ourselves. The believer's life is not to be preoccupied with material things as necessary as some things are. The believer is first of all to be seeking after the kingdom of God and His righteousness. We are to put God first in this life. His kingdom is His rule over the earth, His authority over me and you as His creation. That means I shouldn't live as if I were an independent entity, having no responsibility to God, having no concern about um, what He may desire of me. I am to look to God first and all my needs will be provided for because God is the source of all my needs. And the reason we have so many worries is because we are seeking everything but God first. We are too concerned about what does a bank account say or what does the doctor say, what does the boss say. We need to be concerned about what God says, what God wants us to do and to be. And then only then can we have the right perspective on our lives. Many of you know this, right? <clears throat> DGIF. And for many, it is, thank God it's Friday. But for me, when I look at TGIF, it means this. Today, God is first. Let this be a reminder. Today, God is first. Every day you say that. Today, God is first. And putting God first means sincerely desiring, you know, to grow in the Lord. You know, when we receive our paycheck, we do not ask how much should I give, but how much should I keep because everything belongs to God. Putting God first means praying for His guidance and doing His will uh, in our choices, making decisions that, um, you know, would include God. And if we do that, then we have nothing to worry about. And that's why in verse 34, uh, it says, do not, Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. I like the living version. It says this, So don't be anxious about tomorrow. God will take care of your tomorrow too. Live one day at a time. And so this verse tells us that we don't have to worry about tomorrow as tomorrow will get here when it gets here. <laughs> Today has enough trouble with which to concern ourselves. And we are not capable of handling tomorrow's worries. By God's grace, we need to deal with what is before us today. You know, when I was young, I joined a youth fellowship uh, in a church, and we sing a lot of you know, fellowship songs. There's this one song, <clears throat> and maybe some of you may know this, it's called, I Know Who Holds Tomorrow. And the first verse says this, I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from its sunshine, for its skies may turn to grey. I don't worry of the future, for I know what Jesus says, and today I'll walk beside him, for he knows what is ahead. And then the third verse says, I don't know about tomorrow, it may bring me poverty, but the one who feeds the sparrow is the one who stands by me. And the path that be my portion may be through the flame of flood, but his presence goes before me, and I'm covered with his blood. And then the chorus says, Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow and I know who holds my hand. I know who holds tomorrow. Do you? 
Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your word to us this morning. Lord, you are here and you are concerned and you, are, and you care for us. And Lord, help us not to worry, but to turn to you and depend upon you and recognize that you are sovereign and you are in control. That we need to exercise our faith in you, trusting that you will provide. And most of all, to put you first in our lives. Help us, O oh God. We pray in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let's pray our hearts to celebrate the Holy Communion. The Holy Communion is a sacrament that believers observe to commemorate the love and sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. He died on the cross for our sins. And the bread symbolizing his body and the cup symbolizing his blood that was shed for us. So let's prepare ourselves to receive the bread and the cup. Let's pray. Father, we are so appreciative of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. Help us even as we prepare our hearts that Lord you will cleanse us from our sins fill us with your spirit help us to recognize the deep and perfect love and sacrifice of Lord Jesus Christ he died so that we may live Help us now even as we take the bread and the cup to honour and to cherish and to love our Lord Jesus. Amen. Let the ashes to come forward. The scripture says that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us partake of the bread together. In the same way, he took the cup and he gave it to his disciples saying, Drink this all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood shared for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's partake the cup together. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. The Apostle Paul says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes again. And the Apostle John echoes, Amen, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Amen.
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you His peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's thank uh, Pastor John for giving us that sermon. Okay, so we'll be breaking up into the life groups and then we'll have lunch right afterwards. Everyone have a blessed week. God bless you.